So as I said, I'm the Chief Executive of the World Centre for International Affairs, based here in the Temple of Peace and House in Cardiff. This month, we're marking the 100 years of the end of World War One, but we're also celebrating the 80th anniversary of this magnificent and unique building that we're sitting in. And we're celebrating with the World's for Peace exhibition, which is a World's for Peace and Heritage Lottery funded project that looks at how worlds have contributed to peace in the countries years of the World War War. And we're also celebrating with a remarkable program of events right in November, including this one. These events remember the losses of war, showcase world's contributions to peace since World War I, and explore how we build our shared future as globally responsible nations. This building was founded in 1938, 20 years after the armistice, as a monument of remembrance to those fallen in what was then known as the Great War. As you may know, following the end of the war, there was a terrible flu epidemic which claimed some 50 million lives, more than the total killed in the conflict itself. So this building is an expression of hope that through global cooperation and determination, the twin scourges of war and disease could be defeated. It is therefore absolutely appropriate that the Temple of Peace is the location for this event, one that remembers and thanks the black, Asian, minority and ethnic service people who lost their lives in World War I and II and World Wars. I'd like to start the evening by sharing just one of these stories with you. Lieutenant David Louis Kempston was born in 1894 in Port Maria, Jamaica. His grandfather was a slave, but he was also the son of the owner's owner, and he was freed by his father and inherited the plantation, becoming one of the world's elite on the island. His grandson, David Kempston, went to Clifton College in Bristol, before going to Trinity College in Cambridge in 1912, studying law. It seems he left his study in 1914 at the age of war, enlisting in the 1st Sportsman's Battalion, the 23rd Battalion of the Royal Fusiliers, a unit whose slogan was Hard as Nails. He became acting Lance Sergeant and became a of the battalion's rugby team. In 1950, he became a second lieutenant in the Pembroke, uh, in the Pembroke Union Marine before being sent from his unit to Egypt in March 1916. Sadly, in 1917, he was transferred to Malta because he was suffering from shell shock. En route from Malta to the Craig uh, Psychiatric Hospital, his ship was then torpedoed. Despite this, he made it to Craig and spent two months there, during which time he was promoted to lieutenant. By 1918, he was serving again, and his unit was sent to France in March 1918. Sadly, he was killed on September the 21st, 1918, when his, when his division attacked the Hindenburg Line at Rolfsburg. He's buried in France. On his grave is another place of inscription. He needs a white and broken glory, a shining peace under the light. Later, we invite you all to explore the Wales for Peace exhibition throughout this building and to go and visit the World War One of Remembrance in the Crypt. And when you visit the book and look at it, you'll find the book open to the page that contains David Louis Tennyson's name at the bottom. I'd like to invite you all here to visit throughout November to explore the exhibition and come to events, both to help us remember the loss of war, but also to look forward to how we can build a shared, peaceful future together. I hope you enjoyed the evening very much.